the coaches, the administration, the everybody who played a role in the in recruiting, and there's so many people that uh, put time in, student workers, and there's so many people who put a lot of effort into, uh, which I I think is a really good signing class. The kids we signed in December, the kids we've we've signed now, there are some guys, especially because of the, uh, especially locally, there are some guys that are going to be joining our program. I think. I mean, with Twitter and all that, all that stuff out there, a lot of people know who those gentlemen are. Um, but with the schools not being in, there's some guys you, we can't announce yet. But uh, um, you know, the, this class is a mix of uh, kids from out of state. You know, the majority are going to be are more local guys. They're going to be joining our program. You know, Ohio kids, Western Pennsylvania kids. Uh, um, you know, locally here. Um, is going to be very well represented. And uh, I, I like our class. And, and like I said, there's a lot of people to put a lot of effort and a lot of hours um, from the coaches, the administration, our faculty, uh, you know, you know, on visits. There's so many people that it, it's a team effort, and, and I appreciate everybody's effort. And uh, um, and then, you know, then it'll be time to move forward. And we're, we're going to – uh, we're, we're doing, we're starting spring ball early. We're starting on Sunday. And, uh, so now it's time after the, you know, we're kind of wrapping up this class and it'll be time to kind of move on and, uh, to rededicate all our efforts to the kids who are on campus right now. But, uh, I know our kids are working hard and, um, you know, both in the classroom and, and, and preparing for, for next year's season. So I, I like what we have going on right now. Well, I think it, it, there's a number of things involved there, but uh, number one is uh, is toughness. Number two is potential. Um, you know, is you know not just, and I believe that's always the case. Is you don't, you know, if you go if you're going out and you're recruiting a kid, you know, let's say, uh, for instance, a, a junior college kid who's going to meet a specific need, or you're taking a graduate transfer, like uh, something like that, and you know, it's you're. You're, you know, you're going to develop them a little bit, but it's kind of, you know, are they are they ready made? You know, a lot of kids, you're looking at not just what they are, but what can they be down the road, and you know, how are you projecting them? Um, and there's a, there's a lot of different, you know, maybe a position change, maybe a kid's going to grow. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into it, but you know, at the end of the day, you want to watch them. Uh, have you seen them play, you know, compete on the football field, work hard, be a, a, a winner, show the characteristics, uh, the intangibles that you know that, that you want in your program, in your culture. And I think all those kids that, uh, you know, the local kids that we're getting, all these kids that we're signing are kids that fit that culture, fit our, you know, what our blueprint is that's going to lead us to winning championships. And then, you know, and then different kids are in different – spots where some kids are changing positions some kids are you know are going to grow get bigger are going to grow into a different spot whatever it may be and you know there, there's some projection as far as that's concerned but uh, you know there's a lot of experience um, you know from our standpoint in recruiting where um, I think you you know I, I've had some success as far as is that's concerned don't just look at what a kid is now what do you believe is going to be a year from now two years from now three years from now and do they fit the the culture which you want in your program? So again, better when speaking locally, how was the talent locally? Uh, it was good. I mean, it was good. I, I mean, I think you know you you're they're well coached young men, um, for the most part, and kids that, uh, um, you know, it's you know because not only are we going to have some kids that are that are going to be scholarship kids, but a number of walk ons, and and in my experience. You know, once they once they're on campus, there's really no difference as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's you know some of those kids are going to earn money, some of them are going to play a lot, some of them might not play much. You know, just I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball, and nobody does. But uh, um, you know, if they played in a, you know, obviously you play, you come from a, a good program, you you've been well coached. Yeah, it, it's a different game when you get to this level. It's a it's a big step up and. Um, but if you haven't played winning football and you haven't uh, 
um, been successful at the, at the high school level, it's probably not going to translate to the college level. Well, I think it's, it says a lot about Youngstown State, what President Trestle, what the, the faculty, everybody involved has going here. You know, I think that uh, probably more so than any time that I can remember, Youngstown State is an institution, is a destination for local kids. And, uh, you know, you don't have to go down to Columbus or Pittsburgh or wherever to, to find a high-quality education and one where you're going to have a really good college experience. I know that when I came out of high school <laughs> a long time ago, um, it was more of a commuter campus, and that's changed. I mean, you 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 bring even local parents at times down here, uh, people who live here locally who, you know, don't have kids in school yet or whatever, and they come and they do the campus tour, and they get a chance to meet with our faculty and our coaches and, and administration, and they – come walking away saying, wow, the, you know, boy, has this place changed and it's, and there's some exciting things going on here. And from my standpoint, that, that, that's, uh, it's, you get them here and you, you, you have a, a heck of a product to sell. And I, and I give a lot of that credit to President Trestle, the board, the, the, the faculty and everybody, the, the team that's here at YSU and obviously the, the city itself and everybody's kind of come together to, to, to do some really good things here at Youngstown State. How did the uh, December date help with the recruiting process? Did it make it any less hectic up to the, up to the wire? Yeah, it did. I mean, it was uh, from, you know, for us, you know, it it clears some things up. You know, some of the kids that are signed, you know, you get them out of the way. The kids that we sign, you don't have to continue to see them every week. And, uh, you know, you don't want to say babysit them, but that's kind of what – what happened with somebody who would be committed, you know, you got to continue to see him, spend money to go see him. Um, so for us, it really makes a lot of sense. And, but, you know, and I, I'd have to really think it through, uh, you know, there are pluses and minuses to everything. You know, there are some good things about that. I've always been one. And I'll say it one last time that, that says that, I, you know, having, I mean, it's having an early signing day, a late signing day. Why have a signing day at all? When, you know, if somebody's committed and he's on board, you're committed, you have the scholarship room, sign. Get it over with. Um, you know, you make a commitment, make them live by that commitment, sign. And otherwise, all these verbals and all that stuff, it doesn't mean much. You know, for the most part, our kids that have committed to us have, have uh, you know, they, they've stayed committed. And, you know, I mean, there's always one or two here or there where somebody changes or – you know, is up in the air, whatever it may be. But uh, you know that you know you you want people who give their word that they're going to stay with their word, and uh, you know. So, uh, but I do think it cleared some things up for us. It saves. I think it saved us some money on our budget, which is always a good thing. You know, because you you know somebody who's you know four states away, whatever it may be, a plane flight away, you don't want to have to keep going down to see them every week. Which, you know, under the old rules, when there was one signing day and you didn't have that December signing day, you, you had to continue to go see those kids. You have five signed now. For the more board do you expect to come in? Is that You know, they're all come, they're, they're kind of flooding in right now. We're going to sign uh, – uh, well, I mean, signees and, and kids. So it's a, probably another 12 or 13. Or no, I'm sorry. There will be 12 or 13 total, and then obviously, you know, oh, uh, you know, a number probably on top of that, another a number of guys that are that are walking on. That some of them are that will go on money later, and uh, and some are going to come in here to try to earn money. You know, some of them we've already decided that, that we've already talked to them and saying that, um, you know, they there could be some kids who go on go on scholarship money even before the fall, depending on how things work out in the spring. So there's a lot of things. You know, we have a number of kids joining our program, and we haven't been able to announce all of those kids, but uh, um, each one has a, a little bit different story. But, uh, you know, it's kind of having a salary cap and uh, and being able to manage a roster, and that that's always ever-changing. But uh, 
I'm excited about all the young men, um, you know, locally in the state, the signees, all the different things that uh, that are coming to join our program because, uh, in the end, they're all going to have a chance to to compete for playing time. And I think that each one of them was brought in here for a specific reason. And that's to to make our culture stronger and make our program better. And I think they we've accomplished that with this class. What about transfers, Bill? Uh, yeah, you never. I don't. You can't really bank on that. There's some kids that uh, have reached out to us that are interested. You know, they're going to still finish the spring semester. You know, we have to decide whether that interest is mutual and do they, you know, I think after spring practice, you know, you have a, a little bit better idea of where your, uh, you know, what your immediate needs are. Uh, does somebody, do they fit what you want, what you're getting done? Are they going to make you better come the fall? There's just a lot of things that go into that. and. Um, some transfers are obviously very appealing. Some of them not as, and, uh, I think you got to really research those things. And, you know, my, you know, now that this day is over and we wrap this day up, you know, my, my full attention and our full attention will go to the, to the young men on campus. Do you expect everybody on your club and in the state to? Or? Yes, I do. I, I think that the guys are, are going to stay and, uh, um, you know, I mean, you never know. I mean, it depends how the how the competition goes through the spring. Now we have a, um, do we, I think we do a pretty good job of, of of uh, get, you know, giving a lot of people, giving everybody an opportunity in the spring. You know, some guys are going to get more reps than others, but um, if somebody sees himself in a position, I think our guys, for the most part, on our on our roster, are happy, and you know, they we're on the same page. We don't, you know. Uh, you know, we're straight up with guys. They, I think they understand where they are, where they're, what their role is right now, and it's up to them if they want to change that role. Um, but I think they usually have guys transferring and such when they feel like either, A, they're not, um, it becomes obvious, clear to them that they're not going to have a chance to play here or the, or as much as they want, or two, um, they were, they were sold, they were, they felt they were sold a bill, you know, a, a, a bag of goods that you know that we weren't straight up I think that we're pretty straight up and honest with our with our kids and I think that keeps guys on the same page is that part of the advantage of having spring as early as you are this year in terms of kids knowing early whether or not they they fit in and, and make the right decisions or what are some of the advantages of having it early well I having it early for me is to is twofold number one we're going to get uh um we'll get our work done um, but we're gonna, it's going to give us six weeks straight of training before they before finals weeks over in May. Um, so, but it also, you know, we're, we're going to be doing some new things. You know, a couple new things. You know, we have a new coordinator on offense, which is going to be Brian Christ is going to be our offensive coordinator. We're going to be doing you know, uh, experimenting some on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I, obviously, I'm very involved on the defensive side that uh, um, Richard McNutt and uh, Donald Delicio will be the, you know, co-coordinators on defense. You know, if things don't change, you know, which obviously things can always change. There are always people trying in to scavenge our, our – take our staff and hire our guys away from us. But right now that's the way it looks. And, and uh, But it will give us a chance when spring ball is over to lay a foundation – and then can you know then use some meeting time, some time where our guys are able to to see themselves having gone through the things that we're doing, the things we're experimenting on, and continue to teach and reinforce those things throughout May. Where if you don't, when you when you have it later, yeah, you might have some meetings leading up to it. You might have some theoretical things, but the players haven't been through it yet. And uh, I've always felt that if the schedule, if the the previous year, you know, every year is a little bit different. Um, like obviously a year ago, we weren't going to have an early spring ball because we went so late this year. We didn't go as late. So, um, it, it works out that, uh, that we could have a little bit earlier spring ball and take advantage of, uh, what I believe is a schedule with, uh, that can, uh, can, can help build towards the, the, not only the, the, the fall, but to the summertime and, and what we're going to do during the summer. 
Brian's been with me for a number of years and uh, um, been around me. And, uh, you know, I think we were on the same page on, on a lot of things. And uh, um, I think he's going to do a good job. We're not going to completely overhaul what we did offensively, but we're going to make we're going to tweak some things here and there. And um, we communicate well. He understands me. I understand him. I think that uh, uh, that's real important. And, uh you know, so Brian's going to be the coordinator. Joe Gans is going to move over from tight ends to uh, uh, to quarterbacks. Um, obviously, Carm's back on the offensive line. You know, we're going to um, Travis Tzlerich. Uh, it's a hard name to say. He's a, he's a young guy who's been around us for a while. He's going to be working with the tight ends, and then uh, uh, everybody else is kind of where they have been. Um, Oh yeah, Tim Marlowe was moving from. Uh, he was our assistant, been with us on defense, and he's going to move over and coach wide receivers. That's where he played, and I've always kind of groomed him for that spot. And knowing that, I think it's it's good for him. It's good for that room because he's going to provide a whole another uh, somebody who's been on the defensive side ball uh, the ball now for three years. It gives you. Uh, I think it helped his career, but it's also going to help that room to have somebody who. You know, who's been on the defensive side of the ball besides myself when I'm in that room that uh, um, that gives you a whole nother perspective. And uh, so I've always that's always kind of been been my plan with Tim. But, uh, you know, you got to find the right time to, to make that happen. Montgomery is a guy that I, you know, that I got to know over the like kind of like late in the fall. Um, talked to him a few times. He he expressed interest in doing this and uh, knew a lot about him. Know his father a little bit, but uh, I mean not well. But I I met his father a few times. But um, obviously having my son at Notre Dame, you know, was a teammate of Montgomery's, and and uh, um, so I. I I know a, lot, a pretty good amount about him, not only as a player, but uh, you know he sent me some tape, and I was able to evaluate him. Does he fit us as a player, and what he does, and the type of player he is, but is a person, and would he be somebody who could come in and compete? You know, an older guy, kind of been around the block a little bit, has had had tremendous success as a high school player, won two state championships in Georgia, um, and then walked on at Notre Dame. But, you know, turned down a lot of scholarships to go walk on at Notre Dame. That's where his dad was coaching at the time. But I uh, think he has a lot of talent. I think he's a, a competitor. He's a tremendous person. Um, and, you know, he just brings another guy to, in that room to compete. And uh, I like our quarterbacks that are coming back. Um, but it just brings, you know, adds to the competition here in the spring. And, um, you know, I think competition makes everybody better. And that's what we're just trying to do. And it's not a really a flat reflection on, on what we have coming back but to, to kind of get a, a bonus guy who I think is talented uh, smart a leader um, to go to go into that room and compete he's going to make everybody better and uh, um, I, I like you know like I said it's not really a reflection of what we had but we had one a returning player and our next guy was a, a redshirt freshman you know, this brings in an experienced guy, an older kid who's been around the block a little bit to, in that room to, to compete, and I think that'll make everybody better. For someone like that, is it, is it hard to evaluate them when, you know, when you're just going off of high school and talk to state? No, I don't think so. It's like, do you have the, you know, you, you go off of, uh, you know, like I said, there's part of it's a projection. But, uh, you know, I always believe this. When you, when you look at quarterbacks, if, if you show the ability to win, I mean, there's a lot of people you can you can evaluate them being able to throw and move and do all those things. But when you when you've won, you've won championships. Th that says something to me. And then, uh, over over a number of years, and, and he was able he did that in a in a uh, at a high level down in Georgia, which isn't you know it's just tremendous football. He played in a really good league, and 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 uh, uh, that tells me a lot. And then obviously he was he's been coached by. Brian Kelly and that staff and and uh, you know it's it's a good uh, I think it was a you know, when you look at it you have to look at not only their talent but the person and yeah is there a little bit of guesswork involved yeah but I I, I believe that uh, 
when you meet a kid and you, you talk to a kid and look him in the eyes and you see what makes him tick and is he the type of kid you want in your culture to bring into your program. You know, you don't want to bring somebody in who doesn't fit and character-wise doesn't fit and is going to upset the locker room. And uh, I believe that, you know, with Montgomery, we got the right kind of kid, you know, to, to bring in and, and, and add to the mix. And uh, um, I think he fits in well with that room. I think it's already happened that way. I think, they, you know, he gets along with the other guys. I think every, you know, it's like he's been here for a couple of years, and I think that's always a plus.